Honourable Speaker, Your Excellencies, Members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, friends. I would like to begin by expressing my sincere thanks for this award. This is not a word that I can accept personally, but rather something I am proud to accept on behalf of all human rights defenders and victims of human rights violations in Palestine. Really, this award for all of us, and believe me, this is how it has been received. Since the news of this award broke, my office has been inundated with victims, colleagues, and former clients expressing their support and happiness. This award says that we are not alone, that the people understand our struggle, that there is a hope in the future. I have come to Sukhum from Gaza Strip, territory under siege. For almost six and a half years, the 1.8 million civilians of Gaza have been cut off from the outside world. Imprisoned. This closure has resulted in a human-made disaster. 1.8 million civilians' fundamental rights are deliberately violated on daily basis, and there is no end in sight. We are living through the de-development of the Gaza Strip. According to the World Health Organization, over 90% of our water is unsafe for human consumption. Electricity cuts off up to 18 hours a day are routine and widespread, and unemployment has increased as has the price of basic food stables. Over 80% of Gaza population have been made dependent on international aid. Driven by desperation and the need to support their families, our youth constantly risk their lives trying to cross to find work. Can you believe that this is happening in the 21st century. We are being slowly and deliberately strangled while the world watches. This closure has become institutionalized. What was once shocking is now routine. A few trucks carrying food or construction materials are allowed in and we are celebrating. But this human-made disaster, it is the unquestionably illegal and collective punishment. And it is avoidable. It truly, it is staying unconscious of international community. And this is without mentioning the bombings, the incursions, the constant hum of drones, or the frequent offensive that have rocked the Gaza Strip and terrorized its people over the last seven years. In particular, I must mention Operation Castled 2008-2009 offensive on the Gaza Strip. Over 1,200 civilians were killed in 22 days, and more than 5,000 has been injured. But these figures, while horrific, do not convoy the scale of destruction. The number of homes, farms, and workplaces, hospitals or universities, parts destroyed. Parts of the Gaza looked like the aftermath of natural disaster. Can you imagine your children growing up in this environment? The fear 
that you would live with as you lose sleep worrying over what the future holds for them. The stated purpose of this illegal policy of collective punishment is to weaken Hamas. Clearly, this has failed. Hamas remains in complete control of the Gaza Strip. It is better armed, equipped than ever before. The closure of Gaza Strip evidence is simple reality. International law has been deliberately violated in pursuit of elusive political goals. The result has been the opposite. Entrenchment of the situation, it is innocent civilians who continue to pay the price. This harsh reality is repeated across occupied Palestine. Nearly 20 years ago, the Oslo process was supposed to lead us towards peace and independent state. But this process was a promised on disregard for international law and individuals' rights. The result has been the reality that we are forced to ensure today. And we can only conclude that any peace agreement that is not firmly anchored in human rights will not last. Israel and the world have to realize that we are the stones of the valley. Governments, political parties, armed conflict can all wash over us. But we shall remain. What we want, what we demand, is to be treated with the humanity, with dignity, and as equals. Two states, one state, or no state, the Palestinian people exist, and their humanity, their human rights, must be recognized. This is our dream. We are not fueled with outrageous demands. Dignity, equality, humanity, these are the cornerstone of human rights and international law. Are these demands so unreasonable? This is also the message I, my colleagues in the Arab Organization for Human Rights, are promoting in the Arab world. This work has intensified in the last three years, and we are now organizing regular workshops and training in international law and the human rights law for judges, lawyers, activists from Egypt, Libya, Yemen, and Syria. This Arab Spring has offered us a new opportunity to put human rights and human dignity at the center of the political and legal policy in the countries emerging from dictatorships. We have to find a way of making our voice heard. At the Parisian Center for Human Rights, we work to document human rights violations publish reports and analyses, and prepare cases. We have to document the reality. The world will never have the excuse that it didn't know. Each victim's story must be told and documented. The pursuit of accountability is another key goal for us. If international law is to be effective, if human rights are to be more than high ideals of words on papers, then they must be enforced. We firmly believe that it is the enforcement of international law that is the key to the future. We have seen international law sacrificed before and the results have been nothing short of catastrophic. We must adopt international law going forward.
The reason is simple. International law and international human rights law recognizes our dignity, our worth, and our value as individuals. It says that we are all equals regardless of our nationality or gender or age or our financial situation. It is this sense of equality that has been missing so far and which must be established in Palestine. As in so many other situations around the world, until we are recognized as human, as equal, there can be no progress. In pursuing accountability and enforcement of law for Palestinian under occupation, however, the system is stacked firmly against us. The world see the Israeli court system as a model system. And perhaps in some respect it is, but is firmly biased against Palestinian victims. Indeed, this is a key struggle for human rights defenders. The Israeli court system is strategically used to present an illusion of justice while in fact entrenching impunity. We have to dismantle this illusion. The facts speak for themselves. So please bear with me while I give you an example that is close to my heart. We are approaching the fifth anniversary of Operation Castlet. In the aftermath of this offensive, our lawyers submitted 490 criminal complaints to the Israeli military authorities and court system, requesting the opening of criminal investigation. These complaints included the most notorious cases from the conflict. In almost five years, we have only received 44 responses. This means that 446 cases have been completely ignored. This is the reality. Five years later, we have four concrete responses from a total of 490 cases. Is this system concerned with accountability? This is why we have been forced to look for accountability outside Israel in an attempt to ensure the victims' rights are upheld and that those responsible for violations are held to account. We have to attempt to bring cases before independent courts in third states. We are probably one of the most advanced and professional organizations in the world at this and have built up dedicated team in many different countries. This work does have an impact. It sends the clear message to perpetrators of human rights violations that they are not immune. That one day they will be held to account, but here too politics gets the way, laws are changed to promote accountability, states refuse to investigate or delay decisions until a suspect has left the country. Against these odds, it is often difficult to continue year after year. But the victims has placed their trust, not only in us, but in the rule of law, in the belief that their rights will be respected. And this is something that we cannot ignore. 
We work for Hudagalia. In June 2006, Israeli gunboats fired artillery shells at a beach where families were picnicking, enjoying one of the few pleasures in Gaza has to offer. Huda was seven years old, so seven members of her family torn apart before her eyes. We work for Abu Halima's, whose house was hit with white phosphorics and high explosive shells during Operation Cast Lead, resulting in the immediate death of five family members. More were later shot at a checkpoint as they tried to reach hospital and burning the blood so deep into the walls that it couldn't be scrubbed clean. And for the Aldalo family, an entire family of 10 who were killed when an F-16 targeted their home with a bomb 985 kilos. The Israeli authorities described this attack as unfortunate and not worthy of an investigation. It is for those people and the countless others that I am grateful to accept this award. This international recognition is an acknowledgement of their humanity and their existence. It recognizes the importance of their struggle for justice and say loudly, you are not alone. While states may turn their backs, free people around the world stand in solidarity. This award is also recognition of the dedication and sacrifice of PCHR staff. After the establishment of the Palestine Authority, they have worked hard on Palestine agenda, demanding that our own authorities respect, protect, promote human rights. For almost 20 years, they have 40 human rights violations committed by the occupation as if there were no internal troubles and fought these internal troubles as if there was no occupation. They have lived the true spirit of human rights, standing up for the victims irrespective of the perpetrator. And they have suffered for this. It is their continued commitment that is so inspiring. We recently won compensation in a case that we have been fighting for 17 years. 17 years and this length of time is not rare. Now I know that this is not justice. It is not accountability either, but it is a result. It does make a difference to victims' lives, and without the dedication of our staff, it would have been impossible. These men and women, our family, have constantly demonstrated integrity, independence, and professionalism in the face of the great adversity. I believe that they are a model for human rights professionals in Palestine, the Middle East, and throughout the world. For them and for the victims, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We will not give up. If we stop 
we will reward the criminals. We have no right to do so. The PCHR family has both a local and international part. Thank you to all the free committed people across the globe who have stood firmly with us for rule of law and against the rule of jungle. Also, special thanks to our partners, donors, who have supported our work for the last 20 years, not by dumping money on us, but by defending the positions of PCHR. Today, we stand here together with you as equals. We are human rights defenders from across the world, speaking many different languages, but we are united and our desire for justice to our dignity and our shared humanity. This is the future. This is what the powerful fear, because they know that united, we cannot be beaten. Thank you all.